Hey everybody, it's the last Robokai here. Uh, we're on to the next stage of the Neo DLC. We're going on to the uh, the Siege of Summer, and I'm joined by Cool Guy, and we got some opening cutscenes to do. Wagi de owatta Osaka fuyu no jin yori hantoshi. Yodogimi wa futatabi Osaka e rounin o atsume ikusa o hajime yo to shite oru. Haika no shirase ni yoreba.大阪城には霊石が運ばれているという。マリアが大阪城にいることは間違いなかろう。ウィリアム、再び大阪へ参ろう。この戦、お主も知る黒田長政と立花宗重殿も参戦しておる。だが。再会を喜ぶのは後にいたそう。人の道を外れて勝ったとて、義なき天下は続きません。霊石を使わずともこの雪村必ずや勝ちましょう信じてよいのだな信繁 皆の者共にサンズの川を渡ろうぞ Ah, the uh the the moment of peace bought with negotiations after the winter siege uh, after Odogimi nearly got the shit shell out of her head, uh, ended, uh, barely six months later, when, uh, issues regarding the filling of the moat in the Saka Castle, because the Saka Castle had a few moats, and the original agreement was the outer moat would definitely be filled, and the Sanadamaru fortress would be torn down, but, uh, the, when the, the Tokugawa people started trying to sort of oversee the filling of the inner moats, uh, that got delayed and stalled and put off, and then it seemed like Odagimi was pulling in more Ronin, so, you know, not too much longer. <laughs> it all kicked off again. And uh, this time, uh, they were a little more prepared on the Osaka side, insofar as they didn't have the Sun of Amaru, but they did get uh, the mountain that, uh, Mount uh, Chaosu, that was held by. Uh, the Tokugawa forces during winter, and so they took that as an in an effort to sort of give themselves a little more a little more buffer room before Osaka Castle. And William is heading in here because he's looking for Maria, and he's got to get through here before he can get to Osaka Castle. I really love how, love how over the shit she looked uh, she looked on her CG in the uh, in the <laughs> the cutscene. Just like yeah, I'm still here. I'm still still do, uh, doing doing evil evil Kelly things. But man, I wish I was like literally anywhere else. I want to be back in Spain, but I gotta like be do my honor to Spain. It sucks. Spain needs more of these glowy rocks. I don't, I don't understand, but whatever. So it's very difficult to get in here without alerting everybody with the old, uh, with the old horn, but for whatever reason, not a huge amount of people come running in. I don't know. This, uh, this level is pretty cool. It's got a, got an interesting little gimmick to it. Uh, aside from the fact that West will be, yes, we'll be facing all of the Braves again. Uh, <laughs> I feel like that was a foregone conclusion. Yeah, for the final time, we will be seeing a lot of Braves dropping off the vine today. <laughs> Uh, we will uh, we will also be uh, we'll also be dealing with uh, cannons, but also using the cannons as well uh, to open up areas and secrets and things like that. I like how that dweller is just is just sort of, uh, sort of like rubbing his face on that wooden wall, really living his best life over there. Yeah, he's just having a having a bit of a chew on something. 
there's just dude there's just dudes shooting horns going off people dying dwellers ju uh, just like i am incredibly interested in this rock <laughs> i have a bump on my back but you know what i don't really care <laughs> bombs on your back are temporary at least until you know they blow up and end you but you know temporary it ends yeah, you know, and so, is, so does dwelling. So you can see there's like a lot of areas blocked off and things like that, so this is where uh, where our bombs come into play, make things hey. a bit easier for ourselves. Yeah, we're sort of slipping in while the main while the main fighting force is doing their thing. And well, I think probably now's the best time to talk about who the hell uh, Lady Otakimi is, because uh, yeah, we sort of we we, we could, didn't have a whole lot of time to go over her, did we? Yeah, and I think probably the the best place to start is with uh, Oda Nobunaga's sister, uh, Oishi. She back when uh, when you know Oda Nobunaga was really only sort of starting to kick off his his campaign to become the biggest dick in in the land. Uh, he married his sister off to the Asai clan's leader, uh, Asai Nakamasa. And that helped cement an alliance they had till, for whatever reason, uh, Nakamasa decided to side with, uh, with his longtime allies as opposed to his, uh, his Oda allies. And so, he and, uh, he and, uh, Oichi had a child together, and her name was, her child name was Chacha. And, uh, when things went bad, uh, mm -hmm. you know, obviously Asai Nagamasa, uh, perished. And Oichi, uh, remarried, uh, one of o the Oda's generals, uh, Shibata Katsui, I believe his name is. And the thing about Shibata Katsui was, is he was, uh, he was a long-time ally of, uh, of the Ooh. Oda clan. Like, the Shibata clan, you know, that... Oh, it wasn't really a Shibata clan. Like they, they kind of got owned by the Uesaki. But he was a Shibata. But he, he was allied to uh, the forces that were against uh, Nobunaga initially, when in his own family, when he went to rise power. But served faithfully after that. Uh, after like after the defeat, like you know, basically, mm -hmm. basically just got rewarded for for his loyalty to the to the family, and and you know was made made good use of. And so he married Oishi. And Cha Cha went with them, and then when Oda Nobunaga perished, uh, there was a few uh, a few sort of you know conflicts amongst the amongst the Oda, and that included when uh, when Katsui and uh, Hideyoshi clashed. And I'm just showing you here. Yep, they get they when you kill each brave, they get their own little revenant grave, and as a result, you fight them. They wear better gear. They're stronger. Relatively stronger. Um, they can kill you really quickly. Their damage output is way greater. Yeah, he seems to have a lot less health this time around. Yeah, their glass cannons, I guess, is probably the best way to put it. That, like that, that first encounter you had with Nezu there, uh, there, like took a while. I clenched a couple of times while while you were giving me the history lesson. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> like God bless, bro. You were you were within a inch of death, and I realize you're you can drop a log up in here, but still. Yeah, I had it on. <laughs> Still scary. Yeah, so as you can see, we can blow these up. If I fired that one, all it does is destroy the guard tower uh, that was down there. And we're kind of past there, so we don't really need it. Or alternatively, I think actually it either that or it destroys that other thing, but we used a bomb for that, so it's fine. So getting getting back on Lady... Yeah, see, yeah, 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 you weren't done. Yeah, getting, ba getting back on to that, so... When when the forces of uh, of, of Hideyoshi uh, defeated Katsui's forces, uh, both uh, Katsui and Oichi committed suicide, which left Chacha by herself, and she ultimately became one of uh, Hideyoshi's concubines. How old was she? Oh, was she at the point when both of her parents committed suicide? Do you know? Uh, couldn't tell you. Couldn't okay, tell you. I'm, I'm not really minor, sure on those facts. Like, like considering the timeline involved, I think I I'd place her probably around like of like 12, 13. Maybe that that's probably close to right. Anyway, yeah, like I said, going. I couldn't tell you. I could probably look it up, but yeah. Keep going. So she she finally delivered what uh what Hideyoshi had been looking for all this time, an heir. Because his previous his previous uh, wife 
uh, had just not been able to do it for him as well. This seems to be a sort of like a, a running problem <laughs> amongst people who want to rule Japan. Uh, I think uh, I think Tokugawa was the only person who had lots, who, you know, who managed to have like multiple kids. Unfortunately, just had multiple instances of them dying. And also, also there were there were a couple more instances of his kids just being kind of idiots. <laughs> yeah, kind of dicks. But you know, you get that on the big jobs, I guess. Fam yeah. Family is family. Family is difficult, as as like literally all of feudal history tells us. Yeah. So so as she became, as she you know, as she came of age, uh, Cha Cha became uh, Lady Yodogimi. Oh, the game calls her Yodogimi, but I'm pretty sure it's Yodogimi, so it's kind of weird. I mean, those two those two sounds are actually very uh, very similar in in Japanese script and uh, in a lot of cases also share kanji. So it could be one uh, one of those things with, uh, where the answer is simply yes. <laughs> yeah, probably. So in terms of in terms of people who have like seen all the shit and carried the burden and suffering of war, she's kind of up there in her own way with with Ieyasu himself. Because she too was was quite young when this all kicked off, and she too has sort of survived to the end, so to speak. Very much an ultimate survive uh, survivor with uh, with that sort of story. Holy buckets! Yeah, she's she's seen a lot. She lost two fathers and her her mother, and and she's got, you know, she's got she's got a son, and she she well, you know, her husband has 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 since passed away as well. <laughs> and, um, it's like what? So it's three like families she's, just... she, she's lost, you know, not including her son, but three families total. Mm. Yeah, three basically. Yeah, not the not the best. Well, of two and a half. This one's two and a half. Here's a puzzle for you. Let's take care of this guy first. Boink. Because grenades just aren't enough to kill cannons, so I'm just gonna get this. Oh, guy's so you've basically got to get the dweller up there. Yeah, I probably should have fired that cannon beforehand because it probably destroys something, but there we go. Oh well, whatever. Hey, there's the ticket. Yeah, and there we are. Yeah, there was an entire, like, cannons be uh, being relatively difficult to sabotage was, was, an, entire, uh, was an entire thing um, from, uh, from their inception. It actually took, uh, took, all, it took like, decades. For a standardized way, a way of way of handling, uh, like making a cannon useless, was patented. So before uh, before you you had that, you had some uh, something a lot like what uh, what you were, what you just saw, where basically you had uh, you had to blow them up, and it turned it turned into a matter of destroying the wooden uh, the wooden substructure. But the the um, in a lot, uh, but the uh, the metal cannon itself was still generally fine so it could still be repaired pretty easily right after the battle was done eventually they got around they got around to what's known as spiking the uh, the, the cannon which literally involves taking a uh, taking a, me a metal spike and uh, using it's a very specific kind of metal spike because it has to be able to that to pierce to pierce the cannon itself and it also is a very, a very specific spot you have. Uh, you have to hit the cannon on. It's right behind the firing ring, where uh, where it go. It goes from basically the muzzle to uh, to the bore, which was usually a smooth bore. But you would you would drive the spike right in there, and it was hard. It was it was like blacksmith blacksmith hammer stuff. But you just had to drive the spike through it, and then at that point, like even if you extracted the spike, which was an incredibly an incredibly irritating process. The bore was ruined, and li like the 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 entire latter half of the cannon had to be recast. <laughs> See, when you when you said it was spiking, I just thought, oh, so they just make it point down at its at the ground and fire it, so it blows itself and flies away, like a cartoon. No. No, like they because even if you do that, <laughs> even if you even if you do you do that, yeah. it like it only defor deforms like like part of the part of the of, of the can of the cannon's muzzle, so you can just make another muzzle. You know, like like you can you can just remake a muzzle for uh, for that thing. It doesn't usually ruin the bore, but it's, and to really destroy a cannon, to really destroy a cannon, you have to destroy its bore. There you go. It's fucking like like it's fucking insane insane like like the amount of technology that go, uh, goes into just breaking crap. 
Oh, yeah, absolutely. Like I had, I, I knew that. Like obviously, you look at a cannon, you look at what a cannon's made of, and you know that that thing is the only thing that's probably going to destroy that thing is is probably another cannon. <laughs> I mean, a little bit, li a little bit a like the a little bit like the gun problem, but at least at least with uh, at least with a gun, you uh, you can you can just basically like kick out the trigger, and the trigger assembly is fucked. And then, then that gun is not is not get, uh, getting getting repaired until it hits some serious facility. Beyond that, one, one like the... you know, the the decept the deceptive thing about about a cannon is that is that most of its parts were just made uh, made in in a relatively simple forge. You can call me death. Okay, sure. Like we we can call you that, but we can also call you dead because that's what you're about to be, home slice. Yeah, we can we can work on getting the killinating done. That's uh, God. yeah. Like I actually saw like. Like when you go, when you visit the Tower of London, uh, there, you can go down to like uh, some of the areas where they've got a lot of the old cannons and mortars and things they had there. And ah, jeez, they were hefty beasts. Oh yeah, they, 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 they call they call them uh, <laughs> like eighteen pounders or or whatever. Yeah, that on, that only that that is not how uh, how heavy that cannon is. Those are. Those usually refer are referred to the size of their cannon balls, mm -hmm. not the cannon <laughs> itself. Killed by paired Riken. Wow, it actually keeps track of that. That's cool. Yeah, it's uh, well, it's sort of like, cause it keeps track of of how how you die. If you get killed by in a specific manner, like by an enemy attack, it will it will point it out. Like, it, it happens in Neo 2 as well, like, I got I got killed by a certain Oof. enemy, and it referred to me as, yeah, it's this motherfucker, Son <laughs> it's of this a asshole, bitch. and there are cannons firing over there, and I don't want to get shot, Yeah, I, he's got a couple of buddies here. I wasn't sure if that was him or what, because, like, like that, was, that was quite a way to introduce yourself. Yeah, our, old, uh, our buddy there with his big-ass cannon. Remember, he said his cannon was dangerous the last time we met him. He was fucking around. He was he not screwing around. He can quick around shot him. that fucking thing. There we go. Okay, so we got rid of his boys. Now we just got to get him to. Now he's behind the door. Okay, and come he's on. He's just freaking shooting. Freaking mask. Yeah, I love it. It's the silliest goddamn thing. <laughs> There are there are a lot of silliest goddamn things. I I so I am so glad that Neo Neo embraces the hat. I mean, I I, I felt I felt like it would be redundant for uh, for me to uh, for me to uh, to complain about about that dumbass hat you've got again. But trust me, I had an eye rolling moment when we loaded in. Believe it or don't, uh, Neo Two actually introduces you to the guy who wears this. Oh, buddy. I, he can, I, I can I can't remember that. his name exactly, but I can tell you that he converted to Christianity uh, mm -hmm. during the time of uh, Oda Nobunaga and stuff like that, and he took on the uh, the name Leon. Huh. Leon, huh? Yeah. So there you go, and this was his armor set. I'm gonna have to look his ass up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the yeah. The you, story you, of you meet him in Neo too. <laughs> the story of Christianity in Japan just continues to amaze me every t uh, every time every time I read about it more ju uh, just because the the original Jesuits were just such dicks about about how they proselytized uh, when they when they originally showed up because like like a lo a non trivial part of Saint Francis Xavier's speeches to uh, to the Japanese people were you've been following the uh, the wrong thing so far yeah all of those ancestors you uh, you you venerate so much. They're probably in hell, so you need to follow me in order in order to not go to hell. And it's just like, dude, like, how could you be more culturally tone deaf? <laughs> we're talking, we're talking about about a religion that ha that happily ended up adopting a lot of a lot of pagan nobody, a lot of pagan holidays just to be uh, to be more culturally sensitive and acceptable to the pagans that, uh, that they uh, they were attempting to talk to. And Saint Francis Xavier shows up and, is, and it's just like, no, 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 all y'all are wrong, all y'all are wrong. <laughs> it's like, okay. There's, there's, a, there's often a good, a good reason why missionaries go off to other countries. It's because no one can fucking stand them back home because they're <laughs> dickheads. I mean, Jesuits as a, as a whole are are like. And just to be clear, like I'm a practicing Catholic, so like I, I have I have like I have like my my religion card to say this. Like 
Like, like freaking freaking Jesuits have, have a have a tendency to just stir shit for the sake uh, sake of stirring shit sometimes, just to see what happens. And like ninety nine percent of the time, that is exactly what's required because uh, because because all church hier uh, hierarchies need to be challenged like constantly, constantly. And like like Pope Francis is a great example of that of that that in. In good positive action, he has absolutely challenged a whole bunch of like stupid, crazy bullcrap that uh, that, uh, that that the Vatican has has maintained for decades longer than uh, than it needed to. But there was also that one time out of ten where it's just like you, you could be a little bit less of a dick about this. <laughs> Why are cannons. you destroying these cannons anyway? I feel like I've I've missed this. Well, they fire on you when you're down there, but also there's an achievement for doing it. Like, so oh, I'm just sort of showing okay. Everybody. Yeah, every single stage in Neo just about has an achievement of some sort. Uh, <laughs> it's very, it's probably very important to note that. Uh, it's like side missions don't, but almost every single major mission has an achievement of some description tied to it. Even the, uh, even like, even in the, even in the DLCs. Snooping around. Yeah, I was, just, I was just like, this place seems way too quiet. Like you've had. They're all, one, they're all expecting one... me from the other direction, which is. Yeah, why. I was just, just like, like this is. I, uh, I am not okay with how quiet this is. <laughs> okay. But, yeah, dude, we're getting, we're getting the memories of a lot of people that we've just blown the brains out of. Uh, okay. What the hell is going on with these people? I mean, he already literally was through you. We were behind you. I mean, the door's locked. We have to kill him to get the key. Still, though. He, he, is, he is the gatekeeper. And, and we are the key master? No, wait, no. Ghostbusters doesn't really work here. Yeah, we already we already had the uh, hey like you know like choose oh, your own destruction and we this got giant multi arm skills and ah, I still got more I got like I've got I've actually loaded up on the uh, on the, <laughs> the, the second life jutsu. <laughs> still, it's just like I, I was expecting him to just uh, just be, uh, basically be, uh, be like, all right, now is my it's my big chance, Megatron, and like just fucking uh, fucking do axe things to you, but I guess not. No, not this time. Uh, I don't recognize dear. any of these freaking names, and I feel so bad no. about that. Well, remember, they were the, they were the Braves, and the Braves. There's only really two of the Braves who who have ever really appeared much outside of like very specific stories, uh, like you know, and yeah. like obviously Sasuke is is the other one, and he is uh, the it, big one. Yeah, like they. Like, there's a, there's a reason why there's a character in Naruto named Sasuke, and it's because fucking that's uh, because Sasuke. Uh, <laughs> you're you're way too late to the Sasuke. party, buddy. You and your fucking horn. You and your fucking horn. Everybody's dead. You tooted too late. He toots as he pleases. No, well now he's fucking dead. Well, another thing he sh he shares in common with Doctor Doom then. The only question is how many times will he come back? Because Doctor Doom's up to something like eight. Well, I, you know, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll open a shrine up down there, so I guess he respawns. Okay, sure. We'll give him at least one. <laughs> what could be manipulating them? Uh, they don't want to oh lose, and they want to win. So yeah, that's like, what, like what's, mani is... what's manipulating them is a desire. Like, it's really funny, like, like, I, I, like they just don't really sort of understand. <laughs> it's like, I God hate this. God bless it. I hate this. Swear to God! Now that dude. Son of a oh fucking... come on! Because you don't want to accidentally poke it. Yeah, so now this sort of... ding bad is all up in your business. Okay, this guy. Oh, a key eye from a mook! Yeah. Oh yeah, they can bust wow. out all the big moves. Wow, that was rare. That was rare. These are these are the 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 last line of the Son of the Clan, so we're we're kind of opening up on what was the the final big battle um, that essentially kicked off the fall. 
Uh, it was it was referred to as the Battle of Tenoji, and uh, the plan was uh, the, to get the uh, the Tokugawa forces into an area and then smash them with the hammer and the anvil. The anvil being a, a large number of uh, of forces comprised of uh, Ronin split into like three detachments. Uh, one one of them led by Sanadi Yukimura. And then uh, they were going to charge out of Osaka Castle and catch the Tokugawa forces in the rear. And <laughs> a lot of things went wrong. A lot of things went wrong for both sides during that fight. I was going to say, that sounds like a very complicated plan. It was a very complicated plan, and uh, it almost got pulled off except for the fact that Firstly, some of the Ronin got a little over-eager and tipped their hand to their locations uh, when they were sort of setting up the anvil a little too soon, uh -huh. which forced the forces to commit. The Tokugawa forces were caught a bit out of place, so uh, quite a boon for the for the, for the the Asakan forces is that the Ieyasu himself led a detachment into battle. Keep in mind, this guy's like 70-something at this point. Yeah, I was going to say, like, <laughs> like, like yeah, that, he, that dude is he went in. And so he went in, and at that point, they got bogged down. The the, the Sanada forces and like you know other Osaka forces and the Ronin and like were 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 holding their own pretty well. And at that point, if Hideyori had charged out, that would have been it. Would have been over. Uh, at least that's what they, all you know the historians seem to think. It probably would have smashed what Lumara was left. Uh, Ieyasu would have been trapped and killed likely. And then, yeah, it uh, <laughs> it didn't work out. And that was because Hideori didn't charge. Oh, God. Uh, there was a rumor like leaked in the castle. This is one of the assumed reasons why he didn't do it. That um, if he left, um, forces like traitor forces were going to stab him in the back. And there had been like people who had switched sides between the uh, between the last siege and this one. So it wasn't entirely unfounded that this sort of thing could happen. And. As a result, he delayed until he could try and suss out what was going on, and that lost them the initiative. Mm -hmm. And yeah, uh, <laughs> but losing a tempo in chess. <laughs> yeah, very, and in, and so ultimately the, uh, the 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 anvil was exhausted. The hammer did not strike, and the anvil was exhausted. Boy, that that nin that ninja that ninja had all the advantages before you hit a living weapon. Well, just just a reminder, this guy is the other one who quite often gets featured in yep. uh, in folklore. Now, before I forget, the la uh, the last guy uh, guy that you uh... there he is. Yeah, okay, so that's Saizo. Yep, Kiriga yep, yep. Saizo. Yep. Yep. Now, before you uh, before we get too uh, even further away, like the brave before uh, before Saizo there uh, there. You ambushed him, and, and he, he seems surprised about it. Does he have an alternate line if you come at him from the front? Um, I think so, yeah. Okay, I was just curious. Or, I think so. I can't remember if he's surprised because you ambushed him, or, or, or surprised, just surprised because that you've you made just, it this you got far. through. Yeah, yeah. like, I, I was looking at that, and I was just, I just sort of like, huh, you know, I could be red either way. Yeah. I don't think I've ever actually attacked him from the front. So, like trying to recall it now, I'm like, no, I'm pretty sure I've always, I've always let down that ledge to get around because Neo really encourages you to. You really definitely did not have to kill that guy, by the way. You could have just walked forward. I mean, I'm just saying. Gay yeah, would have been the one brave that lived. Yep, he would have been the one that has to live with it. Fuck, possibly a fate worse than death. Yeah. Ah, uh, see, but we we made sure that didn't happen. So good times. It's fine. Yeah, like th this would this way <laughs> this way he's not around to regret it. Yeah, so we're now yeah, we're now we're now at a juncture where we're we're off to fight Sarudi Yukimura. He perished in the uh, in the battle uh, of uh, of Tenoji. There's a lot of different stories to how he went. The uh, the popular version is that he died attempting to charge uh, and be and you know take the head of uh, Ieyasu. Uh, the the historical uh, accepted one is that he was at his camp, utterly exhausted from the fighting, when a uh, breakthrough from uh, from some of uh, the Tokugawa forces came, and a general leading the charge demanded to know if he was Sanada Yukimura. Too tired to get up from his uh, to get up from his position, uh, Sanada Yukimura took his helmet off, confirmed that he was that was him, and uh, and and allowed himself to be killed. That is hardcore, dude. 
Uh, and uh, we saw, saw an element of that when we fought him last, when when we beat Sanada Yukimura. He took off his helmet and offered his head to uh, <laughs> to, to William. William. So we're actually we actually get like references to both like the fictionalized and historical sort of uh, sides of uh, of these conflicts, which is kind of cool. I, I, I like it. On a somewhat related note, with regard to Yukimura, um. I'm gonna be honest. Like, like, I'm not certain I was paying clo uh, close enough attention. But in the in the uh, in the the uh, cutscene before, he had a scar o uh, over his over his right cheek that was very clear uh, clearly made by a good lord, dude. This guy is fucking you up. It was very clearly made made by a sword uh, by a sword stroke. And then his, because his his helmet bear, uh, bears a similar like chip out of it scar, I don't remember that from the last episode. Was that there, or am I just not observant? It was there before okay. we even got to him. The general implica the ge le the general implication is that he was actually grazed by a bullet. Um, like he was just just at the right angle, I think, and he suffered. He he was wounded during the fight, and Neo's explanation for it is that. Um, at that moment when he's there, like, like su having suffered a grievous wound, a moment of weakness, he's dropped to one knee, it could all be over there, that's when his uncle's guardian spirit came to him and gave him new strength to carry on. Mmm, I got you. Okay. Yeah, which we will, we will see an element of once we actually get access to that guardian spirit, which we will get to for a little bit, and uh, yeah, now it's time to go fight uh, Yakimura again. Frickin', it's freaking exactly 1300 elixirs left. これより撃っ邪魔はさせぬ。First verse is essentially identical to the like the second verse. Uh, they're both very much, uh, very much the same sort of fight with Yukimura. The only difference is, uh, and th th this always sort of confuses me, honestly, is that. Oof. Oh yeah, he will. He will. He's got some your, tracking uh, on those hits. Like we never got to see him too much in the form before, but now he's he's show, showing the sh the shit he can he's, do with the. He's with going the all out from the get go this time. Up and over. Now, the the thing about this fight is, is I don't know if it's time based or health based, but uh, Sasuke will arrive at some point in this Jesus. fight. Jesus. Uh, and then you're fighting two bosses at once. The thing is, is that all the times I've done this, he never gets here quick enough, and it's going to be the same here. He's going to arrive more or less when it's over. It's kind of weird. God, I love, I love. When he fires that pistol, and just get big old fire charger. God, that pi that pistol so much rem uh, remind uh, reminds me of the uh, of the um, the. So uh, here he goes. He just arrived, oh. but it's already too late. It begins, and now it ends. Well, see, he just he's just right there. He was on his way over, and then he leaves. Come on, <laughs> smoke bomb. <laughs> Dude, I want to see what he used to make that smoke bomb. That shit hung around for a hot minute.
やはり素晴らしきものよの。死してなお世に尽くせて本望であるヨダミにはすでに霊石を。The, uh, the poo has literally hit the fan. Uh, the taking of Osaka Castle will not be quite as easy as it was historically. Son of a bitch. Yes, it's, uh, it's about to get bloody, and yes, there are still some new yokai types waiting for us oh on God. the other side. Yeah, I've those... been the last robokai. Ugh, and I've been scared. <laughs> I will see you all next time in some side missions. <laughs>